So, who's ready to play some Kerbal Space Program? Well, before we start the playthrough of this step-by-step -step guide, there are a few quick things I want to go over so that you know what to expect of the series. I know you are as eager as I am for some actual gameplay, but I would like to future-proof the playthrough as a guide for new players of RP1 with the changes that are to be expected in future releases. Crucially, we know to expect sweeping cost rebalances of several aspects of the game. This includes things like the cost of tank tooling, the cost of un to unlock certain parts and engines, the upgrade costs of KSC facilities, the cost of buying KCT build points, as well as changes to the actual functions of certain parts, such as disallowing air ignitions of a wider set of engines. With all these pending changes, we are to expect that this step-by-step -step guide may no longer be the optimum path in getting to orbit. Indeed, many of the minute steps taken there in getting there may either be rendered suboptimal or perhaps even impossible by the changes to come. As such, the playthrough itself is only going to function as a step-by-step -step guide for the current version of RP1 and may not be applicable in its entirety in the future. However, throughout the playthrough there are going to be a few key takeaways that should still hold true even with the upcoming changes in place. These will be general guidelines that you should attempt to follow if you want to minimize the in-game time spent and number of launches required to pr progress through the game, and should be invariant of specific costs of facilities, parts, unlocks, or KCT build points. The first, and perhaps the key takeaway, is that research is going to be the gatekeeper in progressing in RP1. Getting to orbit ASAP means having access to the parts that let us build a rocket capable of carrying us there quickly, which means we should invest as many build points as we can afford into our research teams. This is going to come at the cost of upgrading the build rates of our VAB, but in general that is an exchange that we are going to be willing to make. We can offset the reduced build rates we are going to see in the early game, by investing in tooling for the rockets that we're going to launch, tool rockets cost less and build faster. This reduced build time can additionally be brought down by rush building our rockets, an option that is, there is no equivalent for when it comes to research, further highlighting the need to invest every point that we can in increasing our research rates. In the early game, it's likely that near every rocket we shall launch will be rush built to offset the reduced investments we made in the build rates of the VAB. We also need to consider the, the return of investment on unlocking new parts early on. Unlocking an engine is generally a very expensive ordeal, which may pay off in the ca capabilities it gives us in the long run. However, if we're getting an engine or part and using it only once, there may have been better options either with the tools we already had at our disposal or in tech nodes that we may soon unlock. Again, another example where it would be better to get our research rates up. Finally, as advertised in the series, I believe that moving forward the optimum strategy in getting to orbit quickly is still going to involve launching a minimum number of rockets to complete the key progression contracts and get all the requisite science unlocks, even if the design and number of the rockets you'll be required to launch getting there may not be the exactly the same as demonstrated in this playthrough. With that take on the general strategies that are likely going to be optimal in the future, I'd just like to add a few additional notes on my install in particular. Throughout the series I will make the craft files used in my campaign available, and the following mods may be required if you want to copy them over into your own install. Even if you aren't planning on copying Minecraft, I would still consider following mods essential in having a good time playing RP1 in its current state. First out is Terabi which we're going to use primarily for the fins it provides to help us with passive stability of our early sounding rockets. For many purposes, procedural wings are going to be good enough, and I consider it a good practice in general to prune your install of any wing parts when playing Realism Overhaul. However, the starting tech node wings in RP1 have a ridiculously low heat tolerance and will in general burn up on ascent. The parts provided by Terabi have a more reasonable max temperatures, and you will see the fins from this mod featured on pretty much every rocket we shall launch up until building our first orbit capable rocket. 5 out of 5, highly recommend. Next is the tree of RO part mods. These are meant to be a universal replacement for most part mods that you historically had to piece together and prune yourself in your install to get the prettiest en engines, tanks and command pods for your ideal rocket. By installing these mods, you'll find that you're installed to be fairly feature complete when it comes to parts, and I would say that the only engines I really f notice missing in my install is the M1 and the NK9. 
but in general you can do with either of those and without either of those engines just fine if you're going to be flying a plane in RO, it's always a good idea to install the RSS Runway Fix DLL as well. This tiny mod simply changes the collision meshes of the stock runway for a single fused mesh, meaning that your plane will not fall through the ground and explode the whole, ha halfway down the tarmac. Since it's such a tiny mod, there's really no reason not to have it, even if you're traditionally not that into flying planes in RO. To help us plan our progression and not miss any crucial science contracts as we fly our rockets, you'll want either Science Alert or the even better X-Science installed. The factor weighing in the favor of the latter is the very useful science checklist that you can access at any time displaying which experiments you've already conducted and which you have yet to collect from any situation or biome. With the overarching themes of this series being getting a lot of research done in, in as few launches as possible, this, of this is of course a great use to us. Finally, you'll probably want at least Editor Extensions Redux to help you finally adjust your designs in the VAB more precisely than the stock controls allow for, even though the, the remapping of certain shortcuts may take a while to get used to. The sooner you get started, the sooner you cross that particular hurdle, so get it as soon as possible and uh, get used to it. With all that out of the way, I believe we are finally ready to start to play through proper. I thank you for your patience and hope that you will enjoy the show. So, uh, that only took like 15 minutes or something uh, of uh, watching a playthrough without playing anything. But uh, we're finally here. We've started our campaign. We have uh, set up all the initial stuff with the mods. We have made sure to pick the correct KCT uh, build profiles and whatever. Uh, one final note about the series. I know, I know, we should get started already, but uh, we're playing with Test Light instead. And this is primarily for the, well, for the presentation aspect of the series in that we're going to use deterministic mode of test light. Test light is new replacement for test flight, uses the same configurations, same everything, uh, but it's a bit more performant. Uh, it also comes with the op option to use deterministic mode, which basically means, as it says, no ignition failures for the duration of the burn time, but uh, then die. Uh, so yeah, uh, it allows you to use up the entire burn time plus five seconds uh, on every engine that you slap on, but after that it's it's an instant failure. So um, we shouldn't have any failures in this playthrough, but uh, but things will still be balanced. So okay, now now available. Why don't we have there? We go first launch. We have a first launch contract available, and we should accept that. And we should also note that we had lots of money. Uh, upgrades, where we, we give us upgrades, we want that, give us build points in the VAB because that's what we're going to be using. Now, our first rocket. All right, so our first rocket is pretty much the simplest thing it can be, which is a tiny tin booster, some fins to stabilize it, a nose cone, uh, and uh, an avionics unit. Uh, well, we, we the only thing we needed to do is to get to a rate of climb of greater than 50 meters per second. And then we have completed our first launch. And uh, at least that's the only contract aspect of the, of the thing. But uh, the other thing we want to do is also unlock enough science to start our research going. Because right now our research labs are sitting idle. So uh, we also slap on a barometer and a thermometer in here and uh, put the nose cone up there. We can easily offset that inside the telemetry unit because there's a lot of empty space in there. Uh, this has a projected build time of 45 days given the uh, spending we already did in VAB. Uh, and here comes like the first decision of the series. What do we do about this nose cone? Because, well, uh, currently we are sitting at 98 funds uh, of untooled cost for this rocket. If we spend 172 funds tooling this nose cone, well, we can get that down even further. We can reduce it by 11 funds. And you may say, well, okay, spending 172 funds 
to save 11 funds, that doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. But there are two aspects to this. The first thing is this is not only going to affect the build rate down here, but it's also going to affect the construction time, which I mean is what we're trying to minimize in this series. So I would say it's a good idea to at least consider this if only for the construction time. The other aspect of this is we're going to rush build this as well. And the rush building is a fixed cost based on the cost of the building of the rockets. So if we get the build cost down uh, and then rush build it, uh, the savings we make by getting the build cost of the rocket down, well, they, they, they apply to all the steps in the rush building process as well. So I should demonstrate if we tool this and reduce the cost of the rocket by 11 funds, First of all, the build time goes down by a small fraction, uh, but that's that's good, I guess. Uh, so we should uh, we should save that and uh, roll it out and uh, see what happens out in the uh, out in the uh, space center view where things are waiting for us. Okay, so now in the VAB build queue here. We're also going to be interested in rush building this rocket. And as you can see, each click of this button is an expenditure equal to the cost of the rocket itself. And we can click this button up to five times, which means that by tooling this rocket, reducing the cost of the, the rocket itself by 11 funds, that means it saves us a total of uh, 55 funds in the rush building process on top of the savings we already did on building the rocket. So that's 66 funds saved in this step that we were going to take no matter what. So uh, all in all, the process of tooling, well, the payoffs of tooling is going to come way quicker in uh, in this campaign uh, where we where we rush build everything than if we were just building the rockets as they were. So there we are. Uh, now we have our first launch coming up in a little under 26 days. Uh, and, uh, and that's good because we don't want to spend too much time not researching any technologies. However, uh, we're not done yet. We, we're, we're not going to time warp and, and, and get that launched just yet. Before we can finish that first rocket, get it built, get it rolled out. Um, well, we have to roll it out is what I'm saying before we launch it. And the, during that period of rollout, uh, our, if we didn't queue up anything else in the VAB, well, our build queue would just sit idle, which is something we want to try to avoid uh, for as much of the playthrough as possible. Uh, therefore, we want to queue up the next project right away like before we finish building the uh, first rocket. And uh, I can already tell you, spoilers, that n n the purpose of the next rocket is going to be to breach the Karman line. Uh, so uh, there are a few ways you can do that, a few different designs that you can attempt. In our case, because we're playing with test light and the instant cutout uh, of uh, uh, of the rockets at their max burn burn time, uh, we can't do a certain number of the, the designs that you could propose to get past the Karman line. Uh, we're going to need two stages to get to the Karman line. We're going to need both this stage and this stage to pu push us over 100 kilometers. Uh, if we were playing with uh, test light without deterministic mode, or with just regular test flight, uh, then you could stretch these tanks and overburn a couple of seconds and that would be fine. It would increase your risk of failure, but it would still be a valid way of uh, getting the contract done. Because we have a guaranteed failure if we overburn, we can't overburn, and that means we have to resort to this two-stage design instead, which is still valid. And uh, yeah, uh, also, uh, there are two different uh, aspects where you can consider different diameters of these tanks. We're currently re running 380 millimeter diameter tanks, but you can also do it with 300 millimeter diameter tanks. 
the reason why we do 380 millimeter tanks is future proofing for some certain parts we get from Terabee uh, where we can get the uh, let's see here for instance this beautiful thing which is an inline parachute and that has a diameter of 380 millimeters so we adapt our tanks to to fit that which will go up on our next rocket after this one spoilers uh, but we will see that being built later so 300 millimeters is technically more efficient because you get less drag because you have a l lower cross section but uh, this is going to work just fine for our purposes as well and especially since we consider it future proofing again we want to tool pretty much everything here and uh, that's going to be fine so we got that tooled uh, got the cost down to 252 funds instead, which of course drastically reduces the build rate. Uh, or rather, the build time <laughs> drastically increases the build rate. And um, uh, we're in fact ready to uh, build and launch that. Now, are we ready to go ahead and time warp? No, we're going to do one final thing. I know, I know. I, 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 need, to, I need to get this uh, sped up a bit. Uh, we're impatient. We want to launch rockets. Where are the rockets? Give us rockets. Uh, we're heading out to the tracking station and this is an optional step, but I highly recommend it, especially if you feel that you often get trapped in the early game, which I feel sometimes, uh, especially in pertaining uh, the uh, science unlocks. We're going to head over to Brownsville and you may say, uh, yeah, you, you, you're saying stuff. Um, you, the viewer, may say that, well, wh ooh, we're, we're launching from the KFC, why, 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 why are we heading out here, why, why not stay at Cape Canaveral? Well, I have a plan, and it's very cunning, we're going to head into the space plane hangar. And again, this is a very optional step, uh, but we're going to launch a science gathering plane as well. And uh, the reason we headed out to Brownsville is because this is where we find the most biomes in the mainland US. So um, I guess getting to some of the biomes may actually cross the border into Mexico, but that's uh, that's geography and uh, not my not my strong suit. So don't quote me on that. So uh, we're going to be launching one of these as well from Brownsville and if you want to you can also launch that from the KSC that will also net you the forest biome which we won't reach on this route uh, but I don't think that will be required and from here same deal uh, we want to rush build it because uh, it's uh, it's cheap to do so in the early game so we why, why not uh, also the route will all probably net us a KCT build point um, which I should mention, you get one KCT build point for every 20 science you gather. It used to be that every tech unlock you did gave you one KCT build point, uh, but that's updated. And uh, as such, you want to gather all the science that you can get, because one KCT build point equals 20,000 funds. 20,000 funds in the early game, that's a lot of funds. That, uh, yeah, the... Uh, the uh, the benefit of doing that route is going to be fantastic. Okay, are we ready to finally get to launching a rocket? I want to launch a rocket. I want to roll this out. And it's, you see, uh, as we roll it out, that's a, an entire day that was spent not building a rocket if we hadn't prepared our second launch and put it in the build queue already. And uh, right now, well, I want to do a daytime launch. Uh, if you were totally min-maxing, you would have launched it uh, during night and started your research right away. But uh, yeah, uh, it's not very cinematic. And you're supposed to be watching this and learning stuff. So, uh, so there's no point in making this if you can't watch it, I guess. Well, without f much further ado, we have configured everything that we need to launch this rocket and collect all the science that we, it will yield us. So uh, we're, we're just going to launch it and go. Boom. Hello. You're supposed to be working. Why aren't you working? Analyze telemetry. 
Yay, okay, so <laughs> as I said, uh, I have a few issues in my install and this was apparently one of them, but you can always do this manually, so that's that's okay. Um, apparently X-Science is just telling me that I don't have any new science to get. Why, why, why is that? Hello. Yeah, I could get science, you know. You're wrong. Yeah, so that's that's an interesting uh, thing I will have to look into between takes. Uh, but did we get it? Yay, first launch. We're so good at this game. We got up to seven kilometers and uh, we're now plummeting back to Mother Earth. And uh, we did so within the, well, in, in less than a month, because currently the date is 28th of January 1951. And we can get our science teams working right away. And oh, we're really going down fast. Uh, this may actually break the landing pad. So let's just destroy the rocket before it does so. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, Yes, but uh, apart from the fact that we didn't know that the science was there, we got the science and uh, we should start research. Okay, so we have gotten two science, we have spent the science, nice round easy number, and the two technologies that we're initially interested in getting are going to be post-war rocketry testing, uh, post-war rocketry testing, and supersonic plane development. And the order here is kind of important because a supersonic plane development will give us the cockpits and everything that allows us to do suborbital skips, which is of course good, but that's for a later time. The most important thing right now is that we unlock the XASR-1, which is the upgraded AeroB version, when there's also an AJ-27-whatever, I don't remember, it's, it's, it's right there, AJ-10-27. Uh, but we, uh, as, as, as I mentioned, we, we want to be careful with our unlocks. Now we want to re research post-war rocketry testing before we research supersonic plane development. So we should go ahead and do so. And you can notice that our research speed is abysmal. It's going to take us an entire year to get anything done. Well, we are going to have to look into improving the state of those affairs. So, it's about time we put an end to the episode. We finally got our first rocket off the pad, and I promise more launches per episode now that we've got all of the disclaimers and introductions out of the way. If you have any questions about the contents in this episode, or any suggestions on how to improve the series, please leave them in the comment section below. I'm Gaspachian, and I hope to see you in the next episode.